Good morning. I'm so glad you guys are here. Thank you so much for engaging with these videos every week. Um, Sparta is here also. She'll be joining us. But thank you for your engagement and your questions and your comments and your feedback. That really helps me generate my content for the next week or the next day or whenever we're going to go live next. So the latest thing that we have been talking about um, with a couple of people is should I get the flu shot? And it really comes down to, and this is not, let me give this disclaimer, this is not pro-vax, anti-vax, this is not propaganda, this is not trying to get you on one side or the other, this is pro-science and pro-education. So we're gonna talk through a thought algorithm. And basically, is it required for you to get it and is it not? And either way, how can you protect yourself? Because I think we're all aware that the flu shot, or any vaccine, there's risks and benefits. And we have to be informed to give our informed consent of do we believe that the risks outweigh the benefits or the benefits outweigh the risk? And we have to decide that for ourselves. Now I understand as a student, as a nurse practitioner student, I don't have a choice in getting the flu shot. And so I just have to do it and I have to protect myself in other ways. Vice versa, if you work in a place that does not require the flu shot, and I've been there, then you should really be thinking about how are you going to protect your immune system during this season and how you can build yourself up to protect other people that you will be around as well. So let's talk through the two thought processes. Is it required or is it not required? So is it required for you? If the flu shot is required for you, then let's think about which flu shot you should get look at the pharmacies around you, call, do your research, and find the flu shots that are one live strain or thimerosal free. Thimerosal is the preservative, the adjuvant of the vaccine that contains the mercury that we all know there is evidence in literature supporting how it can be damaging to the brain and to the body. And as adults, we have a little bit more of a barrier as our CNS is fully myelinated than the little kiddos, but if you are vaccinating your kiddos with the flu shot, really be on the lookout for that thimerosal free, and then avoid the um, four strain or the multiple strain flu shots because really one live virus is a lot to put in your body. So one, just taking the one single strain to protect you. And there is a lot of evidence whatever side of the vaccine equation you stand on, I urge you to do research on the opposing side. So if you're pro-vaccine, then why don't you do all the research you can, just as much as you've done about vaccines of why or how they could be harmful. If you are anti-vax, then why don't you do some research about how maybe some of the vaccines could be beneficial to you and your family. Don't just pick one side, don't be biased. I think we're, we can all agree there are positives and negatives. There are truths to both sides of the argument. So the purpose of this video is just to tell you if you're going to get the flu shot, how you can protect yourself, or if you're not, how you can protect yourself and protect other people that you'll come into contact with. So we talked about looking at which flu shot to get. One life strain, thimerosal free, check. Okay, so you're getting the flu shot. What else do you need to do? You need to support your detox pathways. And what am I talking about? To inject a live virus in your body, there's gonna be adjuvants and preservatives and chemicals in that vaccine. You need to be able to get those out of your body and allow your immune system to have the response to protect you and get the antibodies against the flu. So how do you support your detox pathways? You need to be looking into a heavy metal detox cleanse before, during, and after you get the flu shot. That can look, I use food, I use a smoothie with supplements, I use a little bit of supplementation along with that. Um, you can talk with your functional medicine practitioner or someone who's really knowledgeable in nutrition and how you can get those heavy metals out of your body. You will hear opinions all across the board, what's strong enough. Um, my, I react so badly to the flu shot now because I don't have much of heavy metals left in my body. And the cleaner your body is, the more detox, the stronger immune system is, the more you're going to react. Because once you take away that protective inflammation, you don't have that wall up anymore and things are gonna come straight at you and you're gonna have a blunted response. So support your heavy metal detox pathways. Look into a glutathione supplement because you need to be able to have the most antioxidants on board in your body for when that virus and adjuvants are injected. So glutathione, you can get it through foods, broccoli, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, grapefruit, bell pepper, oranges, strawberries, 
start boosting your diet and living foods with those. Also, you can get supplements with glutathione. You can get a glutathione recycler. You can get a straight glutathione, hi Sandy, <laughs> um, supplement. And I can talk to you about that personally if you're interested. Also, ester C, it's a form of vitamin C, zinc, B12, be bringing all the supplements on board along with your diet. But let me tell you something about supplements. They are not going to work unless you have a solid foundation for your nutrition. They won't be able to absorb in the body because you will, unless you reduce your inflammation with your diet, the supplements on board, they're not even going to work. Let's see, I wrote a couple things down. I don't wanna forget. Okay, so if you are getting the flu shot, this is where it gets a little controversial. They tell you if you're gonna be around newborn babies, and I get it, some nurses, I've been there, you work in the NICU, you work with moms and babies. Once you get the flu shot, you're around them right away. But if you are getting the flu shot because you're going to be around newborn family members this holiday season, get it now so that, or if you're gonna see them for Thanksgiving, get it after Thanksgiving, because you will be spewing up to 600 times of viral components as if you were not vaccinated. So. Get the flu shot several weeks ahead of time. Let the virus run its course. Let yourself build up the antibodies. Detox yourself from the adjuvants, the chemicals. Let your immune system recalibrate and then go be around your family member because it is a live virus and you are gonna be spewing <laughs> those things into the people that you're trying to protect. Okay, so is the flu shot not required for you? If you don't have to have it, so you don't work for a hospital, you're not a student in a healthcare facility, you're not part of the government, the military, and you don't need the flu shot, and you're like, I just don't think I'm going to get it. That is totally fine, but you need to protect yourself and you need to protect the people around you that you're going to come into contact with during the cold and flu season. So how can you do that? You have to support your immune system, and the best way to do that is through your diet. We talked about glutathione containing foods, bringing in living foods, you need vitamins, you need nutrients, you need enzymes, you can do juices, you can do smoothies, you can do salads, you can stack on fruit. If you want more information on what an immune boosting diet would look like, go ahead and contact me. But if not, let's just talk about your gut health. So your gut health has everything to your immune system. Your, every time you eat something, it needs to be moving through quickly. It doesn't need to sit there and ferment and rot and, and proliferate the bacteria, the candida, all the things in our gut health making us sick. Things that are going to aggravate the bacteria and make your gut health not ideal. Foods like gluten and dairy, those are the two biggest things. If you wanna take steps for your immune system this season that you can do, you can get rid of gluten and dairy. They're going to feed the unbeneficial bacteria in your gut, in your sinuses, if you have chronic and frequent UTIs, all of these infections are stemming from bacteria and you're feeding them by eating gluten and dairy. And then you can kill this bacteria by drinking things like celery juice, having garlic in your diet, onion, bananas, foods high in vitamin C, leafy greens, detoxing heavy metals will help as well, just as we talked about in the first step. And then also you can look at eliminating other heavy metal or high inflammatory foods like soy, corn, MSG, Think about what you're putting into your body. The best way to support your immune system is to get your diet under control and get your stress and your sleep under control. So anything else that you're thinking of that you might do, like elderberry, that's really great. Um, saunas are really good to help you detox and sweat and keep yourself healthy during the immune, um, the cold and flu system, your immune system strong. Um, sorry, my cat is distracting me. But bottom line, so whether the flu shot is required or not required for you, the question is why are we looking to an artificial substance to be our immune system for us? So we are essentially taking an easy way out and making big pharma tons of money. So it doesn't matter what side of the argument you stand on, vaccines or no vaccines, what are we doing to support our immune system? And we can't just rely on an artificial substance. We are created by nature to be healed by nature and artificially composed chemicals like vaccines that have live viruses and have the adjuvants and everything else in them, that is not, you know, that is that is not the lock and key solution that we're looking for. So think about why are we looking for why are you looking to artificial compounds to be our immune system? We need to support our immune systems naturally and holistically, and that is going to be the strongest method. Believe it or not, not being, you know, being on this path for several several years and forced to 
heal my body through food and through nutrition, I am more concerned about putting chemicals in my body at this point in my healing journey than I am about someone with the flu sneezing in my face. My immune system is very strong. I have not even had a sniffle in years. I don't get sick ever. I'm around sick people a lot and that is fine. But several years ago when I was getting chronic infections sick every other month, that was a risk for me and I did not have the immune system to support me against the flu. So it was a different argument. But if you are a healthy individual, be looking to supporting your immune system with your food, with your you know, your stress reduction, your sleep, doing it the best way possible so that you don't have to rely on an artificial chemical compound to keep you well this flu season. If you have more questions, go ahead and send me a DM. If not, let me know topics for next week and I'll see you then.